Senator Kirsten Sinema had fled DC a few days ago to go back to Arizona to get her foot looked at or something and also to teach a class at ASU. She serves as a lecturer in the School of Social Work, I believe, which I find to be ironic, but I digress. While there, she was approached by some protesters who wanted to have their voices be heard, but she was not hearing that as you'll see in this video. Okay, I'll be back. So then we want to talk to you real quick. Can we talk to you real quick? Hi, actually, I am heading out. But um, right now is a real moment that our people need in order for us to be able to talk about what's really happening. We need a Build Back Better plan right now. We, we knocked on the door for We need solutions to Build Back Better plan. We have the solutions that we need. We knocked on doors for you to get you elected. And just how we got you elected, we can get you out of office if you don't support what you promised us. Okay, so what you had there was a group of young protesters who came with a few things on their side. One, some of them had personally worked as volunteers for Kirsten Cinema, so they represent the growing number of people who feel betrayed by her seemingly abandoning her values, turning against things she had claimed to be in support of. They pointed out how important some of the components of the bill are. So they had all that on their side, but unfortunately, they followed her into the bathroom, so none of that cancels anymore. You did it the wrong way. You made the rich person uncomfortable, so your protest doesn't count. Or at least that's what the media has been mostly telling me so far today. Yeah, well, so I'm gonna double down on that, but I'm also gonna double down on your point. I wasn't sure if you would actually, okay. that's okay. interesting. Yeah, and so I'm gonna go both ways here, and because it's logical. So first of all, guys, don't ever follow anyone into a bathroom and do not tape in a bathroom. That's It's crazy, other people were coming in and out. And you're taping them, the flu oh. toilets are flushing. So we do disagree. Yeah, no, don't do that. Don't go into people's, I, I, I hate going to people's houses. On the other hand, I love going to their offices. Why? Because that's a very important form of political protest. What I mean by offices, like, the, I mean, if they're your representative or they're a representative in Congress, their job is to represent you, okay? Mm -hmm. So going to their office is actually, the most fundamental thing in a democracy. You have a right to redress of grievances, whether it's Festivus or <laughs> the, the government. That one's <laughs> actually in the Constitution, right? So you're supposed to go see your representative, but not in the bathroom and not in their house. Okay, that's my mm. uh, sense of it, because it's gonna get ugly. You start following people in the bathrooms, okay? Uh, now, having said that, I will also double down on the point that John is at, at a minimum implying, and we'll talk about more in a second, which is, well, if you weren't so inaccessible, people wouldn't follow you into a bathroom, right? right? And so you're supposed to be the senator from Arizona. They haven't been able to meet with you in a long time. If somebody doesn't write you a check, the chance of Kristen Cinema meeting with you is near zero. And so she, as we talked about it then the last week, Cinema didn't go back to Arizona for a mythical non-existent foot problem. Okay, and besides mm -hmm. which, even if she had a foot problem, I believe they have podiatrists in Washington DC. No, she had a, a fundraiser planned in Arizona with all the people she cherishes most in the world, and that is her donors, that's why she went back to Arizona, okay? So let's keep it real. So while Joe Biden and everybody else, Bernie Sanders, everybody's trying to make a deal with her, she not, doesn't answer them, doesn't answer her own constituents, and goes to serve the only people she cares about, her donors. And then makes up BS reasons about foot issues, right? So if you're more accessible, people don't have to follow you to these crazy places. Which is why, like everybody wants to suddenly say, well, what if what if the shoe is on the other foot? And they they all seem to have agreed that that the comparison should be to right wingers hounding AOC, as if that's a hypothetical, as if Marjorie Green hadn't acted like the clown from It or one of the bad guys in the Warriors outside of her office before she got into office already, as if they're already not hounded. But you want to make that comparison? Well, then let's add a little bit of context. AOC not only does town halls for her constituents, appears in the media and answers the questions of journalists, does press conferences in public, gives speeches on the Senate floor, speaks at length in committee meetings, and has been incredibly vocal about what she supports, what she doesn't, what she wants to be in the legislation, and why that is the case. You cannot come up with a representative who is more vocal about what she supports, why, and is responsive to her constituents. So it is a meaningless, 
It's a baby brain thing to say. Well, what if somebody you liked was to do it? Well, we would have to actually look at the circumstance. They don't need to follow AOC into bathrooms because AOC is a responsive politician who seems to care about her constituents and even responds to the concerns of people that she doesn't agree with. Whereas Kirsten Cinema doesn't talk to literally anyone, whether it's on camera. Lauren Windsor, who you know we have a lot of respect for, she spoke with Kirsten Cinema earlier today in an airport and got her to take a photo with her. But Kirsten Cinema said she would answer no questions, not even on camera, because they're negotiating. Not with Lauren Windsor. Lauren Windsor can't ask any questions about her philosophy, her strategy, anything, because there's a negotiation going on. And so there is so much shallow nonsensical talk about this designed regardless of who it is. Right wingers are doing this, I saw Glenn Greenwald tweeted about this. The end goal of this is stop putting so much pressure on people like Kirsten Sinema. Everyone back off, be polite. I know that you're dying in the streets, you can't afford healthcare, you can't afford your house and all that. But let's not go too far, let's not cross the line of making someone uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, this is the bribery in American politics is so over the top that I'm tempted to, to bribe cinema into getting answers. Like, she'll do almost anything for 5,000 bucks. So, I mean, can, can I give her 5,000 bucks to answer questions about what her actual policy positions are? Uh, I, I bet we could put that together. Let's send the money to Lauren Windsor and she'll find her at an airport. Yeah. I, I mean, look, the, her fundamental dishonesty is. Is really gross. Uh, so, I think one of our uh, members is asking here. Uh, well, no, here. Let me read you two things from uh, from you guys because I think they're relevant here. First of all, Mickey see the Silver Dragon in our member section disagrees with me and says, um, "Good for those young people. Since she refused to meet with her constituents at any time in any way in any place, they're justified in following her into the bathroom, especially since she's flushing their futures down the toilet." Yeah. Which, by the way, you heard on tape because she flushed the toilet and it was in the video. Or someone did. Someone did, but all of that is super uncomfortable to me. But Mickey disagrees. Dragon with a girl tattoo says Kristen Cinema basically saying, quote, stay out of my bubble. Yeah. That's a really great way of putting it. Yeah. It's true. But the bathroom really is a bubble. <laughs> it should be a bubble. That's my Can take I on it. Can I give their response to this, the yeah. actual organization? So yeah. Lucha Arizona, um, uh, who sent some of these protesters said, we wouldn't have to resort to confronting Senator Cinema around Phoenix if she took meetings with the communities that elected her. She's been completely inaccessible. We're sick of the political games, stop playing with our lives. And look, protesters talked to her on the plane. They, they were waiting for her after she got off the plane, I think back in DC, although that seems unlikely considering her um, unwillingness to do any work. Uh, but they have been forced to follow her around. Um, and look, I read a great op-ed and I'll, I'll try to remember, I apologize, I don't remember who it's from, but, but what are they supposed to do? Should they send letters to her office, phone call? Like help her get elected again next time and hope that she actually like feels some sense of loyalty to her volunteers this time. Like we have all of these traditional means to communicate with them. They don't care. She is she is providing a unique test to American democracy, a different one than Trump. Trump had his own, it was horrifying. But she doesn't even feel like she needs to pretend to care about what anyone other than her donors actually think. And she has been more brazen and throwing in her face, spitting in her face than any other politician that I can think of. She clearly is not scared of being primaried. Now, whether that's because she has so much money and she knows the Democrats, the Democratic leadership will still support her, or because she's not gonna run for reelection again. She already knows she's gonna get a big lobbying job. So this is just a cash generating opportunity for her. Like, what do you do with a representative who doesn't feel like she has any obligation to represent? What are you supposed to do? Just wait? Just say, well, no legislation for two years. I guess we had a good run. It sure seemed like 2020 was gonna be different. What are we supposed to do at this yeah. point? What do you do with a problem like cinema? Uh, well, yeah. good news, I have all the answers. Uh, okay. So, um, look, uh, there's a reason why she's blocking things. And if you haven't kept up so far, it's okay. Uh, right now, it looks like almost all the Democrats um, agree on not just the the bipartisan corporate backed infrastructure bill, but the bill back better, that's a tongue twister every time, it's the mm -hmm. worst saying of all time. Anyway, <laughs> build back better bill, the, the three and a half trillion dollar one, they all agree that they should do it. They're not all agree that it should be three and a half trillion, but all agree that it should be a big number, they wanna do it. The two holdouts are Manchin and Cinema. Manchin uh, looks like he's gonna do it too, but at a different price tag. And at least he's put out 
uh, things. And the reason why, if you're wondering why are we not talking about Manchin, is because he said, look, this is the number I want. These are the things I want taken out. These are the things I want in. So at least he's uh, given his position, and then you negotiate. That's fair, right? Uh, we don't like that. We think it's the Republican position. He's incredibly uh, corrupt. Yeah, and he's doing it for his donors and for his personal enrichment. But at least we get where he stands. Whereas Cinema goes, oh, I'm at a no. And I'm not gonna tell you anything about how to switch it from a no to a yes, I'm not gonna tell you what I want. And so I, I think I have a, an answer as to why. Mm -hmm. um, on Super Chat, Ed wrote in, uh, the new name for Kristen Sinema is the Senator uh, is Senator Baton switch since she seemed like a progressive running for the Senate, but talks like a Republican. Now that is absolutely true, and we have the smartest, most educated audience in the world, and we love doing the show with you guys. Okay, so now why is that then? When she ran, she ran. I mean, when she first ran for national office, my gosh, she's the most progressive person you'll ever meet. Okay, uh, she openly bisexual, break, like at a time when it was brave, right? And and talking about how she's going to uh, help with Medicare and lowering your health care and getting you higher paying jobs and just you name it, she was super progressive. Why? Because she had to break out and win with the voters. That was job one. She's got to get into office. And she knows with the voters, they want things that are really progressive. It's not, I'm not, that's not a theory. She ran that way. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. So when she desperately needed you guys, when she had no power at all, and she was beseeching you, she was like, I swear to God, I'm so progressive. I'll do whatever it takes to make sure I deliver for the average voter in Arizona. Now she's turned around and hold on. Kind of logically so, in this really corrupt system, and said, well, before the voters were very relevant, especially when I was an unknown and I had to win in a primary, etc. Mm -hmm. But now I win easily every time by just kissing donor ass. They tell me what to do, I do it. I win in, you know, in a so called purple state, I win easily. Primaries, I have the Democrats be crush all the progressives. I have the media yell at them and humiliate them and call them radicals and outsiders and they're ruining unity. I have the entire, she used, until this moment, she had the entire press under her thumb. And by the way, in a lot of ways, she still does. Still some. Yeah, Axios still, yeah, Axio still doing articles about how she's the biggest accountant and she cares so much about spreadsheets. Other people kissing her ass in a thousand different ways. She's like, I got all the media lying on my behalf. I'm collecting all the checks. What the hell do I need you schmucks for? So now when people say, hey, I think you kind of do need us because we're on to you, then she's super mad. Yeah. And this is John, that's why I agree with both don't follow her in the bathroom, but also what John started with, which is that. Oh, she, no, I'm mostly fine with the bathroom. I no, no, I know, no, I'm saying as a distinction. Oh, sure. But sure, the yeah. part that I agree with you on is she's also using it as an excuse, as if. That's the only thing that's happened in this whole drama mm -hmm. is that somebody went into a bathroom. Yeah, no, as that's if the she last didn't act. walk in there. She didn't talk to them outside of the bathroom before the bathroom. Or so let's after. be clear, she wasn't talking to them ever. She yeah. decided to make part of that the bathroom. Yeah, and so we're telling the whole story, including the precipitating events. So now that finally comes back around to. So why don't we know her position? Why doesn't she just say it? Even within the negotiations, a lot of the senators are like, we don't know where she stands. We're, you know, negotiating with a ghost here, right? Mm -hmm. And it's because she doesn't have any positions. Part of the reason she's going to talk to her donors in Arizona is to collect checks, but the other reason is to collect orders. Yeah. So because she, it was easy to go, oh, I'm generally against it. My donors told me no. Now all of a sudden there's media attention and people are saying, but why no? Which no one ever asked before. Our media sucks, right? And so she's like, what? The plebeian, the masses are questioning me? How did the reporters allow this to happen? Praetorian Guard, where are you? Mainstream media, call me an accountant. Say I work with spreadsheets, go, right? <laughs> and then she did all that by doing leaks and stuff like that. And by the way, Axios should be deeply embarrassed at oh how they God. have handled this. Okay, I mean, it, it really exposes them in a, in a very sad way. Anyways, um, so now cinema is thinking, oh, I can't just kill it. I have to give you a reason for killing it. And then the first reason she gave comes straight from her donors. Oh, well, this raises taxes on the wealthy and this raises taxes on corporations. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it does. You're a Democrat. Trump cut taxes to the bone for the rich and for corporations. And she's called that common sense before making the rich and corporations pay more. Yeah. More, more than they were paying before Trump, by the way. That's when her tweets came out. 
Now she says, how dare you? Trump is right. We should keep the corporate taxes at 21%. My beloved Trump is absolutely right. And when she tried that and thought, oh, okay, I'm done with it. Oh, Everybody's in favor of lower taxes. That's the trick us Republicans have been playing for decades. Wink, uh, oh, 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 I vote no on higher taxes for the rich. <laughs> and then where's the ring F off to her voters? You remember that, right? Yeah. And then that didn't work. So now she's flummoxed and she's on the run. And she had to go to her donors to get orders for what to say next. To try to kill the bill or water it down so they they pay less. Um, I so we, we do have more on this. I just want to read one more example. You you mentioned the Axios thing, so I want to read a little bit from uh, an article titled "Cinema Stars in Her Own Film" by Maureen Dowd of the New York Times. Oh, yeah, I read it. Do you think you? Oh, you did. Okay, well, no, no, wait, the they said, didn't. Go ahead. Uh, people who want to think they can understand her or get to her, let me tell you, you can't. Okay, that's what one Politico told her. It doesn't work that way with her. She doesn't think in a linear process like, okay, will this impact my reelection? She just beats her own drum. Ooh, she's so when she leaves in the middle of something and says, I got stuff to do, it's because she has plans. <laughs> Sometimes she's just more interested in training for an Iron Man. More power to her, man. It's like watching a movie. So when she <laughs> leaves in the middle of something, like negotiations over the most important bill of the Biden administration. The Arizona senator's name is pronounced cinema and it is apt because she sweeps and sometimes when the triathlete has a sports injury, limps through the Senate like a silent film star. The Greta Garbo of Congress as one top Democrat called her. Tell me who that Democrat is because I really want to know who actually told you that she's the Greta Garbo of Congress. Anyway, this is what she expects there to be a lot of. There's still too much. She expects this to be universal because after all, she's a moderate, she's a centrist. They're a special breed and they deserve your respect. Regardless of whether they're conservatives or Democrats, we'll call them by the same name. They're better than you and I. We're all biased. We're all slanted. She's an independent free thinker who's not going to be swayed by things like what her constituents want or what is reasonable or logical. Anyway, there's yeah. a whole article. You can see more of that, but that's the highlights. Yeah. Or low lights. Um, so, uh, look, whenever you see insiders from her circle, as Maureen Dowd explained there, uh, quoting, giving you a quote, understand a couple of things. Number one, that quote is going to fluff her. Okay, because it's from her circle. Okay. Yeah. Secondly, understand that Maureen Dowd or whoever it was in that context decided to run that article full well knowing it's fluffery. Yep. Okay. As and and also understand that most people who read, including the New York Times, just read it quickly and they don't see that. Oh, that's one of her own staffers. Let me mentally discount that. They read it like, oh, I read that in the New York Times. It turns out that she's enigmatic, but for a good reason. She always has plans. Yeah. And if you don't know that and you're a reporter, you don't know that people read quickly and they'll assume that that was real. Again, <laughs> you're not really great at your job. Okay. So you choose to include that in your piece to make her look amazing. Now, I have other sources inside Washington who tell me she's not that bright. So you this whole like, oh, she's so enigmatic and she'll just randomly leave a meeting. But trust us, it's because she has really important plans like running and bicycling and swimming. <laughs> Number one, hey, God bless. Make sure you know you want to keep in shape, bless your heart, right? But that's not a great answer for why did you leave a Senate meeting in the middle without and telling us your policy positions? Do it on your time. Yeah, can you please do your Iron Manning at a time <laughs> when you're not supposed to be doing policy and negotiations on the most important bill at the most important time? Hey, you know what? More power to her. I, I, I just I decided to go for a bike ride. Is <laughs> not a great answer to the whole country is waiting on you to tell us what the hell you want. Yeah. Right? Actually, um, if you could cover for me for the C block, I want to play squash. I just feel <laughs> right. like I got a squash, you know? Yeah, and besides which, guys, it's not true. From what I hear from insiders, uh, the reality is she doesn't know what she's doing. And so she leaves when she gets uncomfortable and doesn't know. And then she calls her donors and asks, what am I supposed to do next? Yeah. That's how sick, not just Kristen Cinema, but this entire system has become. Because yeah. the great majority of uh, politicians, Actually, do that, but in a more organized way. Yeah. Well, almost all the Republicans and most of the Democrats already called their donors. They worked a little harder. They figured out what they wanted. They figured out what a compromise could be with their donors. Why are the Democrats even negotiating? 
Republicans, they, they don't need a single Republican vote. They're negotiating with their own donors. That's what this cinema is all about. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.